Good afternoon. Let's get this set up here. Cool. So, thanks for taking the time to listen this morning. My name's Aaron McDonald. I am the co-founder and CEO of a blockchain venture studio called Centrality. We're based in Auckland, New Zealand and in five locations around the world. And we're very happy to be here in Korea today to share what we are doing. Uh, I'm not here to sell any tokens or promote an ICO. We did that already, finished that, raised around $100 million earlier this year, uh, closing out our sale in six minutes. So today we're here to talk to you about why we are doing what we're doing and then show you what we have been doing. Uh, I've always believed that technology has had the ability to make people's lives infinitely better. Uh, the internet came along and we saw this massive opportunity for people to share information, to break down barriers to trade, to increase the rate of learning of people around the world. And we've seen lots of great things come from the internet. Uh, all these technologies started to give us this great feeling that we could make the world a better place, a more equal place, a fairer place for everybody to live in. But actually, recently, it's kind of been taking a turn in a different direction. Maybe it's been amplifying some of the problems that we had before. If we see now uh, technology is actually concentrating wealth, concentrating power, concentrating influence, concentrating information into the hands of a very small number of companies owned by a very small number of people. And as our world becomes more and more digital, the concentration of these things doesn't paint a very good picture for us as everyday people and everyday, everyday humans who aren't part of these big four or five giant companies that are controlling all of this information. So we have to kind of try and find a better way. We can e either keep going down this path that we're going down now or we can choose a different way. And all of us here in this room, we probably hear uh, from time to time that blockchain is one of the opportunities to change the path. We can go from this centralized world into a decentralized world, and we can try and start to take some of the power back. We can break up the monopolies of information, break up the monopolies of value transfer, and give some rights back to the everyday people. We hope that this is gonna happen, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We're not here just to flip coins around. But there's a problem. Blockchain adoption is actually very low. You know, take uh, the number of applic active applications. You know, in, in Android's App Store, around 2.8 million. On Ethereum, you know, despite the number of contracts and dApps deployed, only around 1,000 of them are active, and probably only 20 of those are very active. Um, and so the adoption of applications is very low. You know, in those top 20, a majority of them are wallets or exchanges. So again, the type of activity that's been per perpetuated in these decentralized applications is low value activity. Less than 1% of the world's population is using um, blockchain technology, so very low adoption, early days. And the technology, you know, there are some advances happening in that space, but by and large, the majority of the technology that users use out there is not fit for taking over this centralized world. There's also another problem when we talk about this revolution of blockchain. So imagine we don't have all of the engineering problems that exist in blockchains um, compared to traditional applications. Even in traditional applications, it's very, very difficult for users to scale in those applications. So if I go and launch a new app outside of the blockchain world, um, it's very difficult to get to the point that I can beat these incumbent operators. They've got such an advantage in data and users and market penetration and influence in government that scaling on top of those guys without all the problems of blockchain is a difficult thing. 90% of applications lose 90% of their users in 90 days. So it's actually a really difficult thing to scale an application. So what are we doing about it? Well, Centrality, we're building an app store with a decentralized twist. So the idea is that if we can take the human approach to it, put people back at the center of it, give them control of their information, how that's used in the system, and allow applications to collaborate with each other to gain scale around those users. So instead of one application fighting against the, decentral the centralized version of itself, 
it can collaborate with many other applications to help grow users, to help grow content, to help grow merchants, to help grow services, to create a rich world of decentralized applications for that consumer. So they're more likely to come into the system and more likely to stay inside the system. We like to think that we, would, we want to create a thousand happy zebras running around instead of one imaginary unicorn. How are we doing that? So there's three big bits to our ecosystem. The first thing is Plug. Plug's a new type of blockchain infrastructure. It's designed to help create a link between blockchains. We don't believe that there is uh, going to be one blockchain that's going to win, that's going to rule all the use cases out there. That, that seems like an impossible situation. Many blockchain companies talk as if this will happen, that they're going to be the winners, but that, that isn't the case. Um, blockchains really, at the essence, are just infrastructure. They're computing power and storage and a security mechanism. If we look at the world today, there are many providers of application infrastructure, and that will be the case in the blockchain world as well. Different infrastructure providers will be good at different things. Different protocols will be good at different things. But from a user's perspective, I don't want to think about that. I don't go into the app store today and ask myself, I wonder which cloud service this is running on. You know, I wonder which protocol this is using. I just pick up an app and start using it. So Plugs joined, is designed to join blockchains together and allow you to create blockchains that fit the use cases that you're working on. Centrality is an app store framework, so it provides a set of tools and modules that allow developers to create interconnected applications. It does all the basic hard things so that you can focus on the value-added things on top. So we take care of things like identity, payments, token liquidity, smart contracts between applications, big data storage and analytics and APIs, and uh, communications infrastructure all of the things that you need to build majority of applications that we use today on top of. Uh, and then we have Blockhouse. Blockhouse is a new way of funding these businesses. It takes the best of the ICO world and mixes it best with or the best of the regulated and venture capital world to provide a different way to fund a different kind of business model. So what do we end up with? We end up with a stack that looks a little bit like this. At the bottom, we've got a blockchain layer, plug, that uh, allows people to build their own blockchains or connect to other blockchains. Uh, we have a set of core services, CentraPay for payments and wallets. You can think of that a little bit like Apple Pay. If you would go to a store to uh, go to the Apple um, framework to build an application and you're a developer, you're not going to go and build a whole payments rails for yourself for your application you're just gonna likely pick up an SDK like Apple Pay and implement it. So CentraPay can be used as an app in its own right or as an SDK for developers. Uh, likewise, single source can be used as an application in its own right for identity management, KYC, AML, all those sorts of things, or you can use it in your application so you don't have to build that. And then on top of that, we've got these interfaces for applications to interconnect into and the apps themselves. We have more than 30 decentralized applications in our environment now with up to close to 400,000 users transacting this year more than $12 million in real value on these applications. So I think the best thing to do is to stop talking about what we're doing and to show you. Um, a lot of people talk about the potential of blockchain and how this world could work and what you could do with it and what they plan to do with it, we're going to show you what we have been doing with it. What you've got here on stage and this, this screen is a blockchain explorer for Plug. Um, like everything in our ecosystem, we are hyper-focused on mass consumer adoption. So we want to make everything really, really simple for consumers to use. If you don't get mass consumer adoption, in blockchain, you don't get decentralization. And so that has to be the first thing that people focus on. Um, you may not have seen a block explorer like this before. We've tried to make it super friendly for consumers to use. Um, everything's explained in natural language that every, everyday people can understand. And the visualizations of things are familiar. You can scroll through the block if you want to to look at transactions, just like you would uh, going through a movie on Netflix. 
and see what's happening inside of the environment. As we start to do things in this demo, you'll start to see states in increment in the blockchain. So the first thing I'm going to do is start at the beginning. If you're trying to create an interconnected world, um, you need an interconnected identity. So I'm going to go through and use single source to create an identity in this system. Now, single source is at the bottom layer an open protocol. So anyone can build on top of the single source bottom layer protocol. And we've done that because we think ID should be open to everybody. It shouldn't be a system that's proprietary. And, and we want people to innovate on top of this platform. Um, the next layer up on top of that is a scoring engine. So this scoring engine is used for things like doing the KYC, checking who you are, validating who you are, checking that there's any issues with your, your profile as a person, or in, in other use cases, as a device, or as an asset, or as a company. Then we have engines for scoring things like AML, so looking at your transactional behavior, the wallets you connect to, the wallets they connect to, the funds that go through those wallets, and coming up with scores for those things. And likewise for credit scores and reputation scores. So I'm going to go through now and register. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're creating a basic account. And this would be kind of like creating a MetaMask account. Um, it's the lowest level, it's unverified, it's anonymous in the system. And this gives me the ability to start to interact with applications at the lowest level. Um, I want to do a little bit more than that, so I'm going to go now and verify my identity. So we're going to go through a few steps to do that now. Okay, so what we did there was um, took a photo of myself, but in the process of doing that, um, our system did a couple of things. It checked to see if I was a real person by tracking my eyes, and it also asked me to do a couple of things. That's why there was a cheesy smile in there. So it's trying to verify that I'm an actual real human being, and then it's taking a photo of my face that will match with my identity. So we send this across to single source now. Single source extracts the information that I provided to it, and then it will go through and create a basic profile. So there we go. We've got a verified photo. So that's, that's something that it's compared with my legal identity. It could be quite useful in a, a dating app, for example, to prove you really look like you do. Um, and it's pulled out some information now. And that information has a single source verified tick against it. So if I want to use this information in a process, my name, my date of birth, my country of residence, we can, we can trust that that's verified now. If I go back to the home screen, we can see that some more information's come up. Um, it's given me a score, and that's a combination of the information that I've provided, that it's checked against risk databases, and the uh, activity on, or transactions on that account that I've created. We can also see here that uh, there are zero apps connected to my profile. So let's go and fix that. I'm going to jump from here into another uh, application, quite an exciting one. We think it's the foundation of how mass consumer adoption will start to take place in this space. So we're going to go and jump into Silo. Silo is a decentralized communications protocol and platform. Oh, just let that come up. Um, and I'm going to go and log in. Now, I've got two options here. I can create a, an account from scratch again, um, just like we did before. Or if I've already got a single source ID, I can log in with, with my single source verified ID. So I'm going to do that, picks that up. Now, Silo's asking for permission to some things that it pulled out of my single source profile. So now we've got this passport that we can take between applications and make it very easy and very seamless for users to connect to different applications in the environment. So here we go. We're in, we're in Silo now. And because it's a messaging application, I need someone to talk to. So I'm going to go and have a chat on stage with uh, one of the co-founders of Silo. Ben, are you out there? Ben? Is he down the back? No? Wait a minute. I'll just give him a message.
Hey, come up on stage, bro. I got the message. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so I'm going to hand over to, to Ben now, and he's going to explain a little bit more about Silo. Fantastic. Thank you, Aaron. Um, so my name's Ben. I'm the product director at Silo. Um, and as Aaron's introduced me um, and Silo, we're a completely decentralized communication application. You can think about Silo similar to Line or WeChat, except fully decentralized. And we bring together crypto payments and a cryptocurrency wallet, uh, fully decentralized communication, um, and also a marketplace of dApps, which you can access from within Silo. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal the screen from Aaron's phone so that I can show you a bit around up on stage. So this creates kind of a portal for people to interact with the Centrality ecosystem. Uh, Chat's a very familiar app that people on a, use on a daily basis. So we embed a whole bunch of applications inside of Silo. They can exist by themselves, of course, but we think it's more seamless for the user if they live inside of here. I'm actually just going to swap phones. So I'll walk you through very quickly. Um, so here we have Aaron's profile. Um, as you can see, Aaron's been through the single source verified process. So you can see his little single source verified badge. What that means is that he can be trusted when he's communicating with other people within Silo and also other businesses and people know that he is who he says he is. Back here, we have um, fairly familiar functionality except fully decentralized. Um, as Aaron mentioned before, um, a big problem with blockchain at the moment is that it's, it's difficult to use and it's unfamiliar and it's quite technical. What we've done is we've put, put an easy set of features together utilizing the blockchain um, so that we can actually get users using our application. And when we say fully decentralized, we mean that everything in here is running on either decentralized protocol on the blockchain or fully decentralized storage. And then we have uh, the wallet functionality as well. So as you can see, I have 6,207 silos in my wallet. It's rich. Um, <laughs> it's going to be worth a million dollars soon. Exactly. Um, and then we can also ho hold other assets within the wallet as well. But what we'll do is um, we'll try out some functionality quickly. Um, should we do a payment, mate? Yeah, OK. OK. You're going to request it from me? Why don't, why don't we do it the other way around? OK. Yeah. Me? From yep. you? So you request it from me. Let's OK, go. then. I'm going to go in and ask for some of Ben's money. Um, and uh, you can see here that this is a simple process. I'm just going to click a couple of things, ask for 100 silos, and that's going to ping across to Ben. So uh, you might have used cryptocurrency wallets before. I bet you none of them were this simple in terms of ask, uh, asking for a payment and making a payment. So now I'm going to pay um, Aaron. I'm going to press confirm, and you're going to see the block on the block explorer come through. Blocks added. Um, Yay, and I have now, yeah, exactly, I've now <laughs> paid 100 silos, which we can see here to myself because Aaron's got my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I just got tricked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, we also have a sticker marketplace. Um, so I'm going to send him a celebration sticker, or two, actually, um, when it comes through. And now, stickers are quite cool on Silo because stickers are on the blockchain. So what that means is that stickers are rare. So we have a limited amount of stickers. Um, and we can see creators coming on board with the platform, setting the amount of stickers that they would like to be available. Um, and then people can trade and use stickers if they own them. So just like Crypto Credit Kitties, you can create totally unique sticker collections that only you can possess or you can trade with others on the platform. And this is an example of one decentralized application that we think can live inside of the Silo framework. We've got another application within Silo, um, which we'll show you quickly. So CentraPay is one of the other core applications and SDKs that developers can use in our environment. CentraPay connects the blockchain to the real world that we exist in today. Users want to be able to go to a store and just make a payment like they do already. They also want, merchants also want to be able to take payments like they do already without having to add new technology in their store. So what we've done is we've teamed up with a, a world-leading world um, FPOS terminal provider to connect blockchain to traditional payments rails. So you can go into any store and make a payment using Silo or CentraPay enabled applications wherever you are. 
So, so Ben's going to go through and demonstrate this now. So I'm in my silo wallet. I've come across an FPOS terminal that takes um, CentraPay, much like Apple Pay. I'll press CentraPay. This is just a little induction to tell me what Aaron's So this just is the first time the CentraPay has been used inside of the silo framework, so it walks the user through the experience. This is actually a totally, totally separate app inside of here. So we enable CentraPay now. Uh, CentraPay is going to look for um, a QR code, which is going to be provided by this terminal. So Ben's going to go in there now and ask for some money as a merchant. I'm then going to press the CentraPay button. Comes up on the terminal. QR and code's then... presented. Simple as that. So now we can make a payment to Papa John's Pizza. Hopefully he keeps the payment this time. <laughs> And that's confirmed. And there we go. So we've made a payment using the CentraPay wallet, shows up in the account balance. So hopefully you can see, just to start off with, how um, this decentralized application ecosystem can start to work. This is real technology. It's available today. We're not talking about the, fa the far future here. Um, we're focused absolutely on bringing mass consumer adoption to blockchain applications in a seamless and friendly way. Thanks for listening to us. Um, stay tuned, follow our channels, get in touch with us if you're a developer, um, and let's create tomorrow together. Thank you. Thank you very much.